to talk about this with Andrew McCabe, the former FBI deputy director. And obviously, this is a huge step down, Andrew McCabe, from the 18 charges, the potential 175-year prison sentence that he was facing. What do you make of the, the terms that prosecutors have come to with Julian Assange? You know, you're right, Caitlin. It's a big, it's a far cry from the from the charges that that were brought against him. But I think it's the right call at this point in this saga. And you know, don't get me wrong. I think that the pros, the charges and the indictment and the prosecution of Julian Assange is entirely appropriate. Um, Julian Assange was indicted by a grand jury uh, in the Eastern District of Virginia, a uh, grand jury who listened to the entire investigation and determined there was probable cause to believe he committed a crime. It's easy to see how they concluded that because the facts here are not in dispute. He did what the law says you cannot do, right? He solicited that information. He published that information, gave it to people who weren't entitled to receive it. Um, but at this point, we are you know, many, many, many years into this prosecution. And I think the fact that continuing to try to extradite him, to bring him here, to hear those charges, and to face those charges in court, really raises significant questions, concerns about what sort of precedent that result might have on legitimate journalistic activity. Well, I so here's my question. Not question. Statement, really. It strikes me as interesting how it's like, for instance, if a man is committing domestic violence against his wife, and let's say you had suspicion of it, and then you put a hidden camera in their living room, and in the living room, you find glaring concrete evidence you see him you know committing domestic violence against his wife and then once you find out that man was committing domestic violence against his wife when that per when you release that information people attack you because you violated their privacy when in reality it's like wait a minute the domestic violence he's committing against his wife is way bigger than the violation of their privacy. Because his wife's literally life was literally in danger. Do I, as an American citizen, feel so bad that, oh, well, he got classified, inf classified information and leaked it to us, showing us what our country was doing to brown people abroad. My thing is the crime of what the United States government was doing was way higher. Oh my goodness. This is a positive story that has made, look, you had people on the left that were in tears. You had people that were free speech activists that were jumping for joy last night. Oh my goodness, shout out to all of you Assange activists that were doing the damn thing for the last few years because you guys deserve this pat on the back. I'm going to share this really quick because I think this is necessary. Look, y'all need to look, do the running man. Go ahead, do the running man because y'all done made it happen. Be happy, be merry, be joyful. But we got to talk about some of the details as well, because I do I, I want to be cautiously optimistic. But yes, let's talk about this. I'm going to start off with homeboy Nico House. Julian Assange is finally free, but it's important to remember that we can't let Biden take credit for freeing Assange like he'll claim, nor can we ignore the fact that Trump's administration handed him to the UK authorities after claiming he'd set him free. Let's get into this on hotspot. Nico. My brother from another mother with the great glowing skin, which I'm a little bit jealous of. Take it away. Julian Assange is going home. That's right. Julian Assange has reached a plea deal with the United States, allowing him to go free. In fact, he is on a jet right now. He is no longer in Belmarsh prison. Even though he was hit with many felony accounts, he's only being required to plead guilty to one, which is illegally obtaining 
information and documents. Ooh. But the U.S. government is going to seek time served, and that's why Julian Assange is no longer being held in Bill Marsh prison and is on the way home. Because Julian isn't an idiot, he refused to step foot in continental Ooh. U.S., so now he just has to fly to an island called the Mariana Islands to receive his judgment from a U.S. federal judge on his trip to Australia. And this island is closer to Australia, which is part of the reason why it was chosen. So let me just go ahead and clear this up. There are a lot of people who are gonna to try to attribute Julian Assange's freedom right now to Joe Biden and his administration. So it is not a coincidence that on the cusp of an election where Joe Biden's numbers are tanking, Julian Assange is suddenly freed. But let's not forget, Julian Assange was holed up in the Ecuadorian embassy in the UK because Obama and Biden's administration was trying to prosecute him. Hell, while Hillary Clinton was Secretary of State under the Obama and Biden administration, she considered drone striking this man, ending his life for doing journalism. Oh. Hillary Clinton is a monster. I don't care what nobody says. That woman is a monster. Hillary Rodham Clinton is Darth Sidious in real life. I don't care what nobody says. Oh my gosh. Between her and Darth Vader, Joe Biden, and what is Donald Trump? Donald Trump is he's oh, 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 oh. so long. He's Jabba the Hutt. Those three, mm -mm, no, mm -mm, yes. Can you, you got a visual of it, didn't you? <laughs> Makes you want to wrench your eyes off a of bleach, don't it? <laughs> but yes, I'm telling you right now, you got monsters, super villains, like Hillary Clinton, Joe Biden, and Donald Trump. My gosh. Let's continue. And the other guy ain't much better. Let's not forget, after Trump Ooh. celebrated Julian Assange during the elections and said that he would pardon him, he ended up completely flipping in the middle of his administration, not only refused to pardon him, but his administration was responsible for putting Julian Assange in Belmarsh. So let's go ahead and clear that up. Both sides. One will try to take credit the other one would try to act aloof, but both sides are responsible for the criminal treatment of Julian Assange for merely doing journalism. And as we celebrate Julian Assange's freedom, it is also important to remember that this is not necessarily a victory for journalism because he is being forced to plead guilty for being a publisher. So we still have to deal with that. But the truth is, I'm just so goddamn happy this man gets to go home and see his family. We can talk about that stuff later, man. Congrats to Assange, congrats to his family, congrats to all the activists who worked so hard and so diligently for years to get this outcome. He's finally free. So yes, uh, so this is the great news. Um, right now, I think Julian Assange right now is still in the air as we speak. So, uh, yes, if you guys have not uh, seen already, uh, Julian Assange is currently flying in the air so that he can get to this island to face judgment. And then once he uh, does that, then he can go home. Um, so... Let me share this as well. Mike Pence ain't got no business even speaking on Julian Assange's name. Of course, Mike Pence is the forgetful vice president of Donald Trump during the Trump administration. So he bears responsibility as well. Here's what... Uh, Great value Ricky Schroeder has to say, says Julian Assange endangered the lives of our troops in a time of war and should have been prosecuted to the fullest extent on the law, which is complete BS. 
The Biden administration is pleading deal with Assange as a miscarriage of justice and dishonors the service and sacrifice of the men and women of the armed forces and their families. There should be no plea deals to avoid prison for anyone that endangers the security of our military or the national security of the United States. That's a bunch of baloney because here's the thing. What Julian Assange uncovered was actually crimes that the United States was doing in the pursuit of destabilizing and taking over countries and taking resources. That's what he uncovered. He did what a journalist is supposed to do. This is right here is Mike Pence being a fascist and cut and trying to play it off as if the lives of our troops in time of war should have been prosecuted to the fullest extent of law. Endangered the lives of our troops. Actually, I would argue that he actually saved troops' lives. Because now, every single time somebody looks at the United States direction, oh, you can't be having troops doing horrible things like this. Mike Pence is a fascist. He's just as fascist as his boss was, and he's just as fascist as his, his contemporaries are in Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. No different at all. Look, argue with your mom, argue with your mama about it. I don't care. That's what they are. Now, that's what Mike Pence had to say uh, regarding um, that's regarding what he, what had been said. Um, now, Let me share this. For confirmation's sake, this is from WikiLeaks themselves. It says Julian Assange is free. He left Belmarsh Maximum Security Prison on the morning of 24th of June, which was yesterday having spent 1,901 days there. He was granted bail by the High Court in London and was released at Stansted Airport during the afternoon, where he boarded a plane and departed, for the, for, departed the UK. This is a result of a global campaign that spanned grassroots organizers, press freedom campaigners, legislators, and leaders from across the political spectrum, all the way to the United Nations. This created a space for a long period of negotiations with the US Department of Justice leading to a deal that has not yet been formally finalized. We will provide more information as soon as possible. After more than five years in a two by three meter cell, isolated 23 hours a day, he will soon reunite with his wife, Stella Assange, and their children who have only known their father from behind bars. WikiLeaks published groundbreaking stories of government corruption and human rights abuses, holding the powerful accountable for their actions as editor in chief Julian paid severely for these principles and for the people's right to know. As he returns to Australia, we thank all those who stood by us, fought for us, and remain utterly committed into the fight for his freedom. Julian's freedom is our freedom. So it says Julian Assange board the flight to London, stands at airport at 5 p.m. Uh, Monday, June 24th. This, this is for everyone who worked for his freedom. Thank you. Let's take a look at this. This was shown behind. Uh, this was shown behind Nico House, but let's take a look at it in its entirety. Well, it'll have a number. We don't. Okay. So there you have it. Julian, as we see here in 4K, is free. And so uh, last night on RBN, Rome went live with this breaking news. I joined just for a few minutes to discuss it. Uh, one of the concerns that Rome has is that 
He doesn't trust the United States, particularly the CIA, as far as he can throw him. I agree with that sentiment. Yes, he is outside of the confines of a prison cell. Unfortunately, I feel like what the United States is once, even though they had you in prison and now you're free, that cell just got larger. It necessarily didn't mean the cell went away, meaning that he feels, and I feel as well, that Julian Assange needs to keep his head low. And if Julian Assange can, if he can legally leave Australia and flee to a state like Russia, China, or DPRK, I say that is within his best interest to leave the West. Get out of Dodge, Neil. I'm going to say it like, like, like my people from Jersey. Neil, okay, because they do not want him alive. And as Savvy Savs has said, she strike, she finds it quite interesting that this happens right before there is a presidential debate that's supposed to happen this Thursday between Joe Biden and Donald Trump on CNN. I also find it very interesting, very ironic that there will be a debate and this happens right before it happens. Anybody who is will be watching this debate, do not let these two decrept fascists lie to your face and play on your face and tell you, well, uh, because my Justice Department actually secured a, a deal with Julian Assange to free him. No, 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 no. They wanted this man dead. Both of them did. They didn't care about him. They didn't care about press freedom. They didn't care about the free speech. They don't care about the actual rule of law. What they wanted to do was they, they wanted to silence him on behalf of the predator class, the, the parasite class. So I think that's something that we have to keep in mind if we decide to watch this debate, which... I might have to, unfortunately, because this is the type of business I'm in. Ugh. But do not let them do not let them do this to you. I'm thinking about going live and just doing it live. Ugh. Why do I punch myself like this? Anyways, so that is Julian getting on a plane and leaving that uh, decrepit old prison in Belmarsh. So let me share uh, this as well. From Deadline. Wait, hang on. Boop. And take that down. Okay. All right, so let me share this article out of Deadline as well. It says, U.S. authorities dropped Julian Assange's extradition demand and strike a plea deal outcome hailed as historic victory for press freedom. So it says Assange has stuck a plea deal with the U.S. authorities that will see him avoid extradition to the U.S. on espionage charges. Court documents show that the WikiLeaks founder will instead attend a hearing in Saipan, in Saipan, Saipan, sorry, in the U.S. Commonwealth Territory of the Northern Mariana Islands in the Pacific at 9 a.m. local time on June 26th, which is tomorrow. WikiLeaks shared footage of Assange boarding a flight at 5 p.m. at the U.K. Stansted Airport on Monday after news of the plea deal broke ground midnight UK time. So, says a letter released by the US Department of Justice states that Assange will be tried on a single charge of conspiring to unlawfully obtain and disseminate classified information relating to the national defense of the US under section 793 Espionage Act and to be sentenced for that offense. In return for pleading guilty to this charge, Assange would be sentenced to time served, 62 months, that same amount of time he has spent in the UK's high security Belmarsh prison. After the hearing, he will be sent to his native Australia. 
the deal ends a 14-year extradition battle with authorities in where the, U the U.S. where Assange is wanted on charges related to WikiLeaks' 2010 internet dump of more than 500,000 secret government, military, and diplomatic documents and other reports connected to the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. The operation follows a UK high court ruling in May, allowing Assange to challenge US assurances over how a trial will be conducted in the US and whether his right to free speech will be infringed. US prosecutors had accused Assange of conspiring with US Army intelligence analyst Chelsea Manning to hack into Pentagon computer and then release classified dip diplomatic cables and military files. He has always denied these allegations. His supporters have said the leaks were in the public interest. Assange faced 17 counts of espionage and one count of computer misuse under the U.S. Espionage Act. His lawyers feared the and faced, he faced up to 175 years in prison if convicted, while U.S. authorities said that the sentence would be much shorter. Journalism organizations worldwide said that the prosecution of Assange under the U.S. Espionage Act would be a serious blow to press freedom. It is one of the most high profile state whistleblowing cases of recent times. Assange has been trying to avoid extradition in the U.S. since 2011. His battle began in August of 2010 after Swedish prosecutors issued an arrest warrant against him following sexual assault accusations which were later dropped. He left Sweden for the UK shortly after the allegations. A London court ruled in 2011 he could be extradited back to Sweden. Assange continued to deny allegations but said he did not want to travel to Sweden to testify for fear it will result in him being extradited to US more easily. So, of course, he is freed, but he had to plead guilty. There is some debate in regards to him pleading guilty, does that mean he's truly free? Uh, there was um, a response from Michael Tracy, and then Scott Ritter actually responded to him in regarding this. So let's get into that because I think that's important to get to more nuance of this. So Michael Tracy said Trump Department of Justice prosecuted and imprisoned Assange, while Biden Department of Justice is now releasing him. He said, I'm sure the MAGA deep state haters will have an easy time explaining that one. Scott Ritter responded saying they aren't releasing him. He pled guilty. This isn't justice. They legitimizes everything the U.S. did. It's good that Julian is free, but this is no victory for the cause of free speech. Uh, so this person says Pan Am Patriot says they broke him until they got a confession. Scott Ritter said sad, but true. So there's more to this that Scott actually says that I want to get into because it is important. So there's an argument between him and Michael Tracy. Uh, Michael Tracy then responds a little bit further. Michael Tracy says, useless semantics. Assange was literally released from prison today pursuant to a plea deal his lawyer sought with the Biden DOJ. That deal was granted and Assange will be free and re to return to Australia, having spent the past five years in prison after the Trump DOJ indicted him. Scott Ritter says, use the semantics. You clearly understand nothing about how the police system corrupts justice. So let's continue on in this uh, because Scott Ritter also responds, I think, a little bit for far further. Let's go here. Scott Ritter says, Julian Assange is free, but his freedom comes at a high cost. Free speech is no longer free. I spoke in defense of Julian, pull back. Watch and understand the price we have paid for his freedom. No man should have to endure what he did. Damn America for not defending Julian. Damn America for not defending free speech. So basically, even though Julian is free, because of what he did at showing the American people and the world of the crimes of America, now it says that, well, if you show the crimes of America, you'll face what Julian did. 
And by Julian Assange pleading guilty to that, it legitimizes the ability of the United States to punish you for being a journalist, for showing the crimes of the state to its people. So this is what people like Scott Ritter was talking about. The battle for free speech, the battle for press freedom is far from over because even though Julian is free, our free speech is still at risk. And so this is why it's so important to continue this battle, even though Julian Assange is outside the confines of a concrete cell. People like me and people like Indie News Network, Richie Medhurst, Danny Haifong, RBN, Savvy Sabs, people like Black Agenda Report, we are not out of the woods yet. We will never be out of the woods until we actually change the system. And I think that's deeply important. Now, uh, I want to share this as well. Let me see here. So shout out to Case Study QB for this. It's a quick clip out of NBC News. They were sharing about this study. I'm sorry, this story regarding Julian Assange. Case Study QB doing the damn thing once again. All right. And then we'll get into some more from the corporate media because <laughs> they have a lot of BS to spew. But let's talk about it. We begin with a major development in the case we followed closely for more than a decade. Julian Assange, the controversial WikiLeaks founder behind one of the most damaging leaks of U.S. military secrets in history, is now out of prison and heading home. NBC's chief international correspondent, Kier Simmons, joins us. He's got the very latest on this plea deal. Hey, Kier. And Hoda, this is an extraordinary shift by the U.S. Uh, Justice Department reverberating around the world. And Julian Assange now flying around the world, landing in Bangkok and then uh, going on to the U.S. territory of the Northern Mariana Islands, where the just, a Justice Department official says he will enter a guilty plea. Now, he's been accused of illegally hacking uh, U.S. Uh, intelligence. The U.S. has wanted him for trial for that for a very long time. That will now not happen. His wife says she is waiting in Australia with his two young children to greet him and that he will be there soon. This is what she told the BBC just this morning. It's a whirlwind of emotions. I mean, I'm just uh, elated. It can't, feels like it's not real. And the White House this morning, Hoda, saying uh, that it had no involvement in what was a Justice Department decision. Julian Assange uh, divides people. This will be controversial. There will be those who will say that this is a victory for free speech. Others will say uh, that he illegally did enormous damage to U.S. national security. Oops, I was muted. Sorry. So that was from the corporate media. I want to go deeper into what the corporate media says, because when Julian Assange basically said the emperor has no clothes, the corporate media does not like that because they are really the stenographers for corporations. They are the spokespeople for the corporations. The corporate powers uh, are the ones who actually wield government power that you know placed Julian Assange in prison. So Let's get to what they're saying so we can debunk some of what they're saying right now. Uh, so let's go with, with this. Another clip from Case Study QB, and then we will get into some more. Let's go. 
The U.S. effort to extradite and prosecute WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange has now ended with him walking free, avoiding any prison time here in the United States. Of course, WikiLeaks published this video of him leaving a British prison this morning after he reached an agreement with the U.S. Justice Department by pleading guilty to a felony charge involving one of the largest leaks of classified information in U.S. history. The deal allows Assange to immediately return to Australia, his native country. You may recall the 2010 leak included hundreds of thousands of confidential military records about the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. Under the plea deal, the roughly five years in prison that U.S. prosecutors were seeking for Assange would be equal to the time that he already served in a British prison. Remember, President Biden said a few months ago that he was considering ending the prosecution against him. I want to talk about this with Andrew McCabe, the former FBI deputy director. And obviously, this is a huge step down, Andrew McCabe, from the 18 charges, the potential 175-year prison sentence that he was facing. What do you make of the, the terms that prosecutors have come to with Julian Assange? You know, you're right, Caitlin. It's a big, it's a far cry from the from the charges that that were brought against him. But I think it's the right call at this point in this saga. And you know, don't get me wrong. I think that the pros, the charges and the indictment and the prosecution of Julian Assange is entirely appropriate. Um, Julian Assange was indicted by a grand jury uh, in the Eastern District of Virginia, a uh, grand jury who listened to the entire investigation and determined there was probable cause to believe he committed a crime. It's easy to see how they concluded that because the facts here are not in dispute. He did what the law says you cannot do, right? He solicited that information. He published that information, gave it to people who weren't entitled to receive it. Um, but at this point, we are you know, many, many, many years into this prosecution. And I think the fact that continuing to try to extradite him, to bring him here, to hear those charges, to face those charges in court, really raises significant questions, concerns about what sort of precedent that result might have on legitimate journalistic activity. Well, I so here's my question. Not question. Statement, really. It strikes me as interesting how it's like for instance if a man is committing domestic violence against his wife and let's say you had suspicion of it and then you put a hidden camera in their living room and in the living room, you find glaring concrete evidence. You see him, you know, committing domestic violence against his wife. And then once you find out that man was committing domestic violence against his wife, when that per when you release that information, people attack you because you violated their privacy when in reality it's like wait a minute the domestic violence he's committing against his wife is way bigger than the violation of their privacy because his wife's literally life was literally in danger do i as an american citizen feel so bad that Oh, well, he got classified inf classified information and leaked it to us, showing us what our country was doing to brown people abroad. My thing is the crime of what the United States government was doing was way higher. And in fact, the fact that Julian Assange was actually showing us what the United States was doing really means that that was a heroic act. Because if we were never showed, we would continue to keep doing the same things that we're doing and signing off on it. So why is that, why is in the world, is it such a big issue for us to know what our government is doing? Why is that a problem? They're like, but our enemies. And I'm like, well, we wouldn't have enemies if you wouldn't keep making them 
by doing coups around the world, by extracting their resources, by destabilizing these countries, you wouldn't have these enemies. And yet you keep making them. And then when they actually revolt against what you're doing, then it's like, oh my God, we got enemies and they're doing these horrible things to us. But the thing is you did the horrible thing first. Like for instance, example, the Cuban Missile Crisis, why did it happen? Did it just because, oh, well, the Soviet Union, they're just this evil empire and they place missiles in Cuba, pointed at the United States. And, you know, this is why communism is so horrible. But you got to read the history books, baby, because once you read the history books, what happened? The United States knows that Russia, a.k.a. the former Soviet Union, Soviet Union at the time, had a lot of resources, had a lot of land. United States wanted that land and resources. Why? Because corporations own our government, even at the time. So what did they do? Well, they didn't like that Russia didn't want to be a vassal state of the United States. So they decided, well, let's put some missiles in Turkey and point them at Russia. But Russia don't like that. Do you like being held at gunpoint? I sure as hell don't. So what happens? Well, the former Soviet Union, the Soviet Union at the time, they also, they had, you know, they had their peacemakers too. So they decided, well, if you're going to point them at us via Turkey, well, we're going to put ours in Cuba and put it at Florida. How you like them apples? So this is why the Cuban Missile Crisis happened, because the United States and their parasitic owners, the corporations, are so damn greedy that, guess what, chicken butt? <laughs> they decided to cause a crisis that would have ended the world over 60 years ago. And we found out about it. And so what did Julian did? He just showed us what our, our country was doing. So this is why it's so important for the work that people like Julian Assange did. I don't want to find out these things 60, 75 years later when it's declassified. No, 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 no. Tell me what my employees are doing now. I don't want to find out later behind after the fact. If we, the people, are supposed to be the bosses of these people in government, then therefore we need to know what they're doing. What they did against Julian Assange is exactly what you is exactly the phrase don't attack the messenger. They attack the messenger. That's what they did. So, with that being said, let's go into, let's continue this. I mean, it's notable to hear you say that. Obviously, his team argued that, that he should be protected by the same laws that journalists are, that he was releasing sensitive information, but in the public's interest. And, and so, you know, he's been alternatively celebrated and by some and reviled by others. And so it is striking for me to hear you, given your former you know, position as the deputy FBI director, to say you think this is the right call. I do think it's the right call. And don't get, don't get me wrong. I think Julian Assange did the wrong thing. Julian Assange hurt the United States government. He no, 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 Andrew. No, no, Andy. He didn't hurt the United States. He hurt corporate interests. That's what he did. He hurt corporate interests. See, this is the problem with these anti-communists. 
whenever you start to do something that is against the corporate interest, but it's in the interest of the people, then it's the wrong thing to do. But no, it was in the interest of the people because we don't want to see people on the other side of the world who are innocent murdered because we have what? Hearts, consciousness, morals, ethics. That's why. So he did do the right thing. It's just your corporate overlords didn't like it. That's why, Andrew. And it was the wrong call to go after him. And in fact, he should have gotten a medal, not prison. He put the lives of our troops in danger. He put the bullshit lives, particularly of Iraqi citizens who had helped our uh, our effort uh, in the war in Iraq uh, in danger. Also so bullshit. This guy did a lot of bad things. But he did a lot of bad things, y'all. See? See? He did a lot of bad things. Question, Andrew. Why were we in Iraq in the first place? Please, tell me why. If we were in Iraq for uh, 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 the weapons of mass destruction, if that was based on a lie, then we shouldn't have been there in the first place. Then if it was based on a lie, then who put our troops at risk? Was it not the Bush administration? Was it not Colin Powell? Was it not all these lackeys of the corporate dictators that put our troops at risk? It, wa it wasn't Julian Assange. Julian Assange didn't send these troops over there. Julian Assange didn't claim weapons of mass destruction. Julian Assange didn't put them there. It was George W. Bush. Who kept them there? Barack Obama and Joe Biden. Who kept them there? It wasn't, it wasn't Julian Assange that put them at risk. It was you. It was y'all that put him at risk. And every single time he called it out, you guys blame him for the thing that you were doing. That's what it was. And because we saw it and he revealed it, you guys decided to put the messenger in jail. And now we, for, for years, the Assange activists have been going, no, 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 it's your fault. And guess what? Couldn't, you couldn't take it anymore. So that's one of the biggest issues with people like Andrew McCabe. He did, some of what he did was very similar to the way the journalists conduct their business. Of course, in other ways, very different, right? There wasn't any of those conversations prior to publication that journalists typically have when they're going to reveal classified and sensitive information uh, to find out what, you know, reach out to the government entity involved to find, let them seek comment and then have a conversation, give the government an opportunity to say, hey, please don't do this because these people might die as a result. So very big differences there. They were dying because of the fault of the Bush, Obama, and Trump administration. Like, they were dying already. It was y'all fault. It wasn't. Oh, dear God. These bureaucrats. There. But the fact is that going forward with this prosecution would run the risk of putting all of those processes and those protections kind of up for grabs. And that could set a very dangerous precedent going forward and have a chilling effect on the journalistic news gathering process and how that impacts the First Amendment. Yeah. Andrew McKay. You guys don't care about journalistic integrity and journalistic practice. As long as they're lying for you, you don't care. Just, dear 
God, these people, I'm telling you. This is why independent media exists, because these people who are in um, in corporate media, they just do not care about real journalistic integrity. Hang on. Oh, geez. Um, I want to go into this as well. And it is to be noted that the people who also painted this narrative of Julian Assange being terrible were some people who cons were considered to be in independent media. You guys know where I'm going with this. Now, they need to say sorry. Start with Chink Uger. You need to apologize. Uh, well, obviously, it's hard to tell who's uh, telling the truth here. Uh, but lately, uh, I have to confess that uh, WikiLeaks has not had an astounding record. Uh, you know, the way that Assange seems to be backing Donald Trump uh, over and over and over again, uh, it, it makes me very seriously question Assange, Assange's efforts to actually be a journalist and not to be a partisan. And I get it. I get why he hates the Democrats. They're trying to put him in prison. Okay, right, but, but so, at the same time, so are Republicans. Let's be clear about and that. And now the Republicans are too, and they have been in the past. But it seems like Assange just picked a side, and 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 look, pick a side. It's funny how he's defending the Democrats when the Democrats actually run in cahoots with Republicans, and we are constantly being shafted by both parties, and yet he's like, pick a side. That's like saying, that's like going to one of those combination Pizza Hut and KFC restaurants and saying, well, the KFC side is, they're, they're being horrible to us, and you advocate for the Pizza Hut side, yet both the Pizza Hut side and the, and the KFC side are actually being ran by the same owner, Yum Brands. I don't know. Maybe, just maybe, he was actually speaking out against the duopoly, but you guys keep, uh, you know, caping for one side of the duopoly while demonizing the other side of the duopoly, even though they both work together in tandem. It makes me question uh, his reporting. And so. And, and so that's the situation we're in now. Uh, so now is he just leaking things uh, that he gets and no matter what, in which case I would respect that? Or is he selectively leaking based on his political motives? Now that that uh, suspicion is out there and it's real and it's possible, well, now I'm concerned that, uh, that it can't be trusted. Sowing seeds of discord for a journalist. And that's what people like Jenk Uger and Anna Kasparian of TYT have done. So now let's take a look. Let's look at the irony. And then he flipped the script. Shout out to Big Mag Crab for this. Cenk Uger said, I hate that Julian Assange had to plead guilty to a crime he definitely didn't do. His real crime was journalism. Wait a minute. Hold the phone. Beep, beep, back up the truck. Didn't you just say that he was playing one side against another? Didn't you say he couldn't be trusted? Cenk. Come on now. Are you going to say that you were wrong? Are you going to apologize to Julian Assange? Are you going to apologize to your viewers? Let's continue. Chang said, and there's nothing you'll be punished more for in America. Don't break the illusion. 
but thrilled that he he'll be a free man finally. Interesting. How Chink Uger so easily will flip the script. I would love to see. I would love to see his uh, him apologize. But I don't see it happening. And if it has happened, please let me know. But there needs to be a huge apology from him. So uh, I was going to play also Hassan Piker also came out against Julian Assange in the past. Just like his uncle. Same thing, but I don't have time for that. But it's time for you guys to apologize. You need to apologize and correct yourselves. Now, as for Julian Assange, he is taken off. um, And he's in the air currently right now. A lot of people, especially his wife, Stella Assange, is actually telling people to keep an eye on his plane because they do not trust the United States government as far as they can throw them, and for good reason. So let's take a look here. So we're going to track his plane in real time. Stella Assange says flight VJ199 will soon take off for Saipan. Saipan Saipan is a remote U.S. overseas territory. He will be entering the United States. Julian won't be safe until he lands in Australia. Please keep tracking his flight. Hashtag Assange jet. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at his flight information and see where he's at. All right, so let's go up here. So it landed 37 minutes ago, okay? So he went from Bangkok, Thailand to Saipan Island, right? So it says landed 37 minutes ago. Uh, Let me see. So... Upcoming flights is from Saipan here to Canberra International. So that's in Australia. So um, duration is going to be six hours and 43 minute flight. So he so apparently he's already in Saipan right now. But I think uh, it should be in a few hours that he goes to see the judge. So. In a few hours, he will be seen and then his judgment rendered, and then he can jump back on a flight and then get to Australia. So we will know by, I'm saying by this time tomorrow, if he's on his way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this log in the chat so you guys can follow along. Julian. But there's a lot of happy people. I saw last night, uh, Richie Medhurst was expressing his joy and happiness for him being freed. So this is a win for press freedom in in, in a small way. Um, Well, in a major way, but uh, the, the fight for press freedom still continues. So Yes, Julian is free. It is a good thing. Uh, I just hope that a lot of people um, are more uh, fervently trying to fight now for the freedoms of Leonard Peltier, as well as Mumia Abu-Jamal. Now that Julian is free, I think it's important that we focus on those others who are political prisoners of the United States government. Uh, because we need people who are going to call out the crimes of the United States. This is what Julian did. Uh, It says, 
CIA created ISIS, says Julian Assange, as WikiLeaks releases 500,000 U.S. cables. This is why they hated him. So it says on the sixth anniversary of the first infamous cable gate by WikiLeaks, when it releases its first batch of sensitive U.S. files on November 28, 2010, it has expanded its public library of U.S. diplomacy with 531,525 new diplomatic cables from 1979. And a statement to coincide with the release of the cables known as Carter Cables 3, Mr. Assange explained how events which unfolded in 1979 had begun a series of events that led to the rise of ISIS. He said, if any year could be the year zero of our modern era, 1979 is it. Mr. Assange has said a decision by the CIA, together with Saudi Arabia, to plow billions of dollars into arming the Mujahideen fighters in Afghanistan, to tackle the Soviet Union had led to the creation of the terror group Al Qaeda. So basically, all of this was stemmed through anti communism. Our terrorism that we experience in this world is basically stemmed from anti communist movements within our government. See why this is dangerous? So I'm going to put that in the chat as well so you guys can give that a read. It's not very long, actually. But there is a direct uh, terrorist U.S. government pipeline that we see um, consistently. Might I remind everyone of Operation Paperclip, where we actually allowed Nazi scientists to infiltrate, well, <laughs> infiltrate, I say that with, you know, loose air quotes because, you know, birds of a feather, as it were, into our government. We even had Nazi scientists in NASA. So it's no surprise, right? So I find it very interesting that Julian Assange basically called out the empire. So this is why it's important to free people like Julian Assange, Linda Peltier, Mobina Abu Jamal. I would love to see Asada Shakur be able to come home. But yes, so take this news, uh, celebrate, have a sigh of relief. Julian Assange hopefully will be back in Australia by tomorrow evening. And let's continue the fight on the way to more free speech and press freedom. Thank you so very much for watching my channel. And I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash JVFON. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much. And you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. More head kisses and have a beautiful day.